Hello everybody, Howard Bernstein from the First Alert Weather Center. Sunday morning and we're tracking three tropical systems. One with very little concern, one with minor concerns, and then one with major concerns. Lee, that's the one I'm not going to worry about. It's out there, but not concerned. Maria, yeah, that's going to be another troublemaker. And then there's Jose. Jose's going to be close, but have, a, I think, some impacts, but not a lot of impacts to our mid-Atlantic beaches as we go into early next week. So let's talk about Jose. Winds at 80 miles an hour, gusting to 100. Pressure's at 973, moving north at about 8 miles an hour. And the Hurricane Center forecast is to remain moving generally northward. And on this track, we expect it about, oh, 250 miles or so east of our mid-Atlantic beaches on Tuesday. And with that, you know, we're talking Tuesday afternoon. I'm just going to back this up and show you. But with that, you can see the track here taking it parallel in the coast far enough offshore that we're not going to have major impacts we're still going to have some waves could be six eight ten feet we're still going to have potential riptide so don't go in the water that could be a big problem for swimmers and of course enough wave action means some beach erosion it'll make a run towards southeastern new england before turning as a strong tropical storm perhaps more toward the east as it's expected there by friday morning to be a moderate tropical storm with winds of 50 miles an hour that's concern there. Waves, you know, some of the waves just north of the storm are running on that 30 plus foot category. That's 17.4. That's not right north of the storm, but that gives you an idea of some of the seas offshore. Offshore uh, Sunday morning uh, from Delmarva, three, four, maybe five foot waves right now, but we've got some eight, 10 footers that aren't too far offshore. Uh, tropical computer models continue to take the storm generally off toward the north and then the uh, northeast there, ooh, some of them come very close, though, to Nantucket by early Wednesday afternoon. So we've got to watch that very carefully. A few of them try to loop it back toward the mid-Atlantic. See that? As we get into Sunday night, Monday. So we're talking a week away. So we've got a little uncertainty as we head in toward next weekend with that. The European and the GFS, I like looking at these two major models. They generally are in agreement. Uh, Euro's a little deeper storm than the GFS and a little bit closer to the coast here. And as we head in toward now Wednesday at 6 a.m., see the Euro is the one that, in the, in the purple, first the GFS and the red, GFS being the American model, that comes very close to Long Island uh, before turning back to the southeast. They both weaken the storm by late... Uh, in the week to more of a tropical storm, but still something we have to watch. As far as the uh, probability of tropical storm force winds, we've been watching them in the 10, 20 percent range along the coastal areas. So will we get to those 39 mile an hour winds? Maybe some gusts toward 40, but it looks less likely that we're going to have tropical storm conditions right along uh, the coast of the Mid-Atlantic. Might get toward Montauk, might get toward Nantucket, Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard. So we'll have to watch that. What do we know about Jose for coastal impacts around here? It does track close to the East Coast Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Tuesday being, I think, the primary day here uh, for the Mid-Atlantic. But still with that track, we're going to have rough surf for a few days, keeping it about 250 miles east of the coast. High risk for rip currents. Some beach erosion, big surf, maybe six, eight, ten foot, as I said. If the path gets closer, then of course all of these impacts are going to be greater. So that's Jose. Maria, the other problem, and we'll take you out to the Atlantic. Maria looks more organized from a meteorological perspective, which is not a good thing uh, every hour now. And it is in an environment where strengthening is expected and it has winds at 65 as of the 8 o'clock advisory Sunday morning. So Maria potentially will be a hurricane later on Sunday as it approaches the islands. Now the Leeward Islands under a hurricane watch, the Windward Islands south of Martinique under a tropical storm watch. And we expect it to be a hurricane, maybe a Category 2 storm, which would certainly do some damage around uh, Guadalupe and Montserrat potentially Monday night, Tuesday. This track is not a good one for a lot of reasons. Remember, some of these areas like Antigua, well, more so even north of there, Anguilla and Barbuda, they're on the hurricane watch. We don't need any more unsettled weather. Barbuda got destroyed. Anguilla got destroyed. Uh, St. John, St. Thomas got heavily damaged. Now the storm looks like it's tracking closer to St. Croix. Even on this track, if it doesn't change, this is a threat for St. Thomas. Lesser threat for St. John, but not good at all. And then a big threat for Puerto Rico as well. I mean, Puerto Rico is right in the middle of that cone uh, as we get into Monday night and Tuesday. And then you see the storm by Thursday night, Friday morning, offshore of the Dominican Republic tracking toward the Turks Caicos, which got destroyed by Irma and parts of the Bahamas. So yeah, this is the last thing they need. Unfortunately, we gotta watch this because it's possible as we get in toward 
next weekend, right, or even nine to eight, nine days from now, that the southeastern U.S., the Carolinas, may be facing Irma, uh, Maria, that is. That's what some of the long-range guidance looks like. It's a long ways out. It's not anything to freak out or panic about, but it's something to at least pay attention to. And if you've got coastal interest from Florida through the Carolinas, even Virginia Capes, uh, you need to be paying attention to Maria and have that plan ready just in case. That's the latest on Jose and Maria on this Sunday morning. From the First Alert Weather Center in Washington, D.C. at the studios of WUSA 9, I'm meteorologist Howard Bernstein.